There we go. So I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful beaded dress right here. If you want to make that, uh, don't forget the pattern is at the moment, oh, I'm out of focus, uh, is completely free. So you can get this pattern uh, with full instructions on how to make your beaded dress from the link up there in the description. So definitely click on that, get your pattern. It's completely free. It will be forever. Uh, so jump on there and take a little look. Um, if you've never done bead uh, brick stitch before, because that's sort of the premise of today's tutorial, we do also have a really great little item on uh, in the website there for sale that you can get if you want to learn um, to use brick stitch, which I'll just show you it on the website just here very quickly. Um, here we go. Where are we? So yeah, if you come onto the bead spider website just here, uh, if you click on the view beaded dress related products section, or just the link up there in the description, it will take you to this page. This is where you can get your free pattern. It's going to be free all along, but if you've never done brick stitch before, I recommend have a go at grabbing our complete guide to brick stitch booklet printable download. I've got all of our thread colors just here, lots of assortment of Delica beads as well. One of which uh, I'm going to be using quite a lot of these ones today. I'm going to be using the yellow, the orange and the red. You'll see in just a minute. Uh, and then I got all my ear wires at the bottom. So essentially everything that you might need is available there on the, um, the website just there. So uh, let's just pop back to me now. Here we go. Uh, so yes, my we've got lots of people on. Uh, let's see, Evelyn is on as always. I can see the comments today. Uh, Evelyn's on, Kelly's on. Um, we've got Sue, Sandy as well. Ida Hopper, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, Seema is here. We've got Kathleen as well. Um, let's see, who else? Kimberly White. That's my cousin Kimberly. She's in Australia as well, up in uh, Brisbane. Um, so thanks for watching, Kim. Um, who else have we got? We've got Martine. Lots and lots of people joining. So who's excited for today's dress? Um, as I said, the pattern is completely free. The one I'm going to be demonstrating for you today is this beautiful design just here the flame, flaming orangey ready colors. Uh, wait, let's get it in focus. Should have put autofocus on today, doesn't matter. So this is the colorway I'm going to be making today. You can see I've got my threads because I've only just finished on this one. But yeah, this is what I'm going to be making the matching set for this one just here. Um, as always, if you want to be on today's show, uh, where's that little thing? Here it is. Um, <clears throat> send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk. You don't have to... Um, you know, it doesn't have to be beadwork. You can send us pictures of what you've been doing, what you've been getting up to, all sorts of things like that. We want to see them. So send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and I'll get you on the show. Um, so uh, just in case you hadn't seen last week as well, I just thought I'd tell you. On Friday, I did this tutorial just here, the Florentine uh, Peyote Tube Necklace. So that one it is on special at the minute. You get any two for £32. That one, we had our most... Um, ex most well, I don't even know how to explain, geez. The, the website literally went crazy on Friday after my tutorial, and so many people ordered. It was ridiculous, the number of you who ordered. Um, this particular design was great, so don't miss out. I am, I am buying already stock for extra colorways, so if any say that they're out of stock, I'll be able to put them back in stock soon, so if you uh, miss out, you know, they'll be back soon. But also, if you get out any two for £32, you'll also get our 120 Peyote tube patterns completely free. So if you missed that tutorial, have a look on the Bead Spider website. It is available right there, right now. Uh, for you to watch so that you can make that beautiful necklace um, and of course you'll get those free patterns as well so definitely worthwhile having a look and trying to get that one while stocks last um, as per what's coming on this Friday because I'll be live again on Friday I'm going to be doing one of the designs from our 
bead weaving super kit. I think that's what it's called. I can't remember the exact name. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm going to be uh, demonstrating. One of those there. But essentially that one, it's a massive bundle. It's going to be available. I've I've been so manic from all of the orders that you guys have been placing that I haven't got the, the, uh, the product ready there yet. It is on the website, but I haven't made the little product category where you can find them all super quickly and easily and everything. But essentially that one is a massive bundle. It includes... Um, a tutorial DVD of Jermaine's. Uh, it has our pattern CD as well. Uh, so lots and lots of good things. But um, yeah, that one, it's a fantastic little bundle. And that's what's going to be 1 p.m. on Friday. So same time as right now on Friday. Uh, yes, so like I said, uh, if you want to be on the show, chuck your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and I'll get you on the show just like these people. So first one we've got here, we have Chris. I saw you're here already in the comments. So thank you for joining us, Chris. Um, let's see, she's made one of the Peyote tubes similar to what I did on Friday's tutorial. Thanks for sending us in that picture, Chris. I love your color choices. Um, by the way, guys, the 120 pattern pack that uh, you get included with the Florentine set, it doesn't just have two color patterns. I should mention that. It has three color patterns, four color patterns as well. Um, so like this one here where it's got, uh, I think that's three colors, uh, or is that four? I can't count, three colors. Um, yeah, the, we, we have ones that also show you patterns like that as well. Uh, Colleen, she, you've been busy. Uh, she sent us three pictures. So this is the first one. She used a gold slider clasp. Um, I see lots of people are joining in, coming in uh, to the, the chat just here. So um, morning to Stacy as well and lots and lots of people. Monica, she's joined. Um, yeah, Colleen, the, uh, that's our Times Square, the, the limited edition colorway. We're almost out of stock of that one too. Um, she's also made her tribute to the pandemic, a little pair of um, toilet paper earrings. I saw these on Pinterest one time and I thought they'd be super fun to make. I think Jermaine had a go at making a pair as well, actually. But yeah, uh, so when the pandemic hit, she started stuck stocking up on the toilet paper but she made a few extra out of beads aren't they fantastic love those little ideas colleen that looks great um what else have we got here colleen has also sent us uh another picture of a different um times square that she's made uh plus some other that's one of our other designs the the athena and then what does that say had to improve improvise on the class nice design thank you matthew that's from our tree of life so um she wants to know if we sell the beads by the charms they're not on the website but i will put them on um and then lastly i've got seema thanks for sending in your pictures seema uh she's got a golden beads chain called Sushi? I can't quite sure how you say that one. Uh, it's tradition, traditional Indian style jewelry. Uh, and then she's also sent us one lovely design here as well, which is a purple color pendant with a purple chain called Tanmani. Beautiful. Thank you for sending that in, Seema. Um, yes, so uh, let's just jump back to me real quick. And yeah, don't forget guys, head to the website, get the little pattern here. If you're not on our email list, because everyone who was on our email list, we already emailed them saying, go get your pattern. We did that this morning. So potentially let me know if you've already got your pattern printed out and you're about to make it with me. Um, essentially today's design, you only need some delicate beads. I'm gonna be using three colors. Uh, you need some thread. I like using Spidalon, which again, it's all, all of the products I'm gonna be using are up in the link in the description. So if you're on Facebook, the link's up there. If you're on YouTube, the link's down there. Don't forget guys as well, please do like, share, subscribe, do all of those sorts of things. Help support our channel, help us grow so that we can bring you more fantastic content like we are today. Um, because yeah, I love doing these tutorials and the more people who we can get to join in, the better. So um, let's see, lastly, I'll just show you a real quick picture, if I can, of the dress. So this is the dress that I'm going to be making. I'll just bring the camera down so I can get started on my little tutorial. Oh, I do have my tea. I should probably have a lovely little sip of that. So just while I'm zooming in here, uh, I'm sure you don't really want to see all that going on. So let's just get myself into position and I'll begin, shall I? So uh, where are we? Here we are. 
So essentially, the design itself, this little dress, which uh, here is my pattern sheet that you will get for free if you download it. It does show you how to make that little bodice piece just there. So you can see this is where you want to start. We'll work this way and then continue upwards. And then we've got blue here for what we're going to do with our tail thread. Um, I do also have on the back there uh, how you do your instructions plus how to attach your little ear wire as well. Um, and then I've done this, instead of coloring it in, I did it blank so that you can make your own tassel designs if you want to. The fun thing about the, the tassel is that you can make them short or you can make them super long if you wanted to, whatever it is that you want to do. It's entirely up to you. So here's the, uh, the the blue design. These are a pair of earrings that I made for Maxine. Uh, but I'm going to be demonstrating today with these beautiful colors just here. So I'm going to be making the pair for this beautiful dress. Let's zoom in and take a look that you can see. It's almost got that beautiful flame graduation at the bottom there. That's what I'm going to be making today. The colors that I have, this one is the silver lined dark ruby, which I'm going to use as my accent right at the bottom and on the top and dress. Um, the dress is made from um, opaque canary luster is that one, which is color number 1562. And then this one here, the opaque orange is color number 722. Um, uh, let's see. Martine says, question about the thread you always use. Is it Ceylon? Does it come in different strengths? It's not Ceylon. It's a little bit different. So Ceylon and all of those, usually they don't come pre-waxed or anything like that. Where the thread that I'm using today, which is Spidalon, I'm going to be using the fawn color. It's um, it only comes it does come in other strengths, but at the moment we've only got the one because it is ridiculously strong. I think if I've got the picture here, I might do you know. Which uh, if we're lucky, I can show it to you, maybe. Uh, but I used the Spidalon as a, uh, a washing line actually because it is even though it's very very fine it's super strong and so when you're using it you don't have to worry too much about it breaking so even if you had a, a thicker stronger strength it's already really really strong so it's almost not really necessary but also because it comes pre-bonded at the beginning ready to um sort of use already you don't have to wax it you can wax it of course if you want to but because um it comes pre-bonded you don't actually have to wax it at all so it stays really really firm it's only one single piece so it doesn't fray which makes it really easy if you have to keep taking your needle on and off to get it back on but anyway uh that's sort of the thread i'm going to be using let's get started on today's tutorial shall we so if i just show you the pattern just here i'm going to start right here with uh let's make sure i'm seeing everybody's comments yes very good uh, Damon's also in Brisbane. Lots and lots of people here from Brisbane, funnily enough. So thanks everybody for joining. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start with this row just here. So essentially the way that you begin brick stitch is you create what is called a little ladder through the center. So one row of little beads that go through the middle here, and that's going to become the foundation of my design. So how to start that ladder? Once you've got your needle and thread on, you need about two meters of thread. But uh, in this particular design, um, you want to make sure that you, you actually want to have a really, really long tail thread for doing all your tassels and a relatively short section just for doing the top half of that bodice. Because all I need to do with my working thread is this section and then my tail thread is going to use all of it for this section down here. So first thing I'm going to do, if I just show you on the screen here, I'm going to pick up two of my um, beads just here. Uh, my two delicas and I'm going to weave through them both twice essentially so just like that in the little screen I'll just pop that little diagram up there in the corner so you can see it and I'll zoom in a little so that you can really see what I'm doing so let's make sure everything is in focus now very good uh, hi to Helena who's just joined us she's from Sweden thanks for joining um, lots and lots of people here who here has never been on one of watched any of my streams before I'd love to know who's new 
do comment in because we always have new people watching for the very first time. So let me know if you're new. Uh, so I've picked up my two beads, just like my little diagram in the top corner there. Um, uh, Daphne's here. She's new. Uh, she's from Canada. Thanks for joining Daphne. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've got my two beads here. I want to leave myself a really long tail. I only need a little bit of thread to do my bodice piece. So um, holding my thread in my hand just like this, I'll go through both beads once more and pull my thread nice and tight. You'll see sometimes that they want to sit one on top of the other. All you have to do is just pinch them side by side, hold your two threads together, and then pull one, pull the other, and you'll see they start to sit quite nice and neatly side by side. If they're not sitting quite the way you want them to, just go through the beads one more time, and that should help everything sort of sit where you want them to. There you go. Look at that. Uh, oh, just out of screen a bit there, sorry. I might just adjust my camera just a tiny weeny bit so that we can bring it a little bit closer to me so I won't go out of screen at all. There we go. And I'll come a little bit. Um, hi, Diana from Florida. She's new as well. Don't forget, guys, Diana, all of you new people, head to the Bead Spider website and get the pattern for free. The link's up there in the description. So don't miss out on getting your free pattern. So I've done my first little row here. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come across so that my two beads are opposite sides. Got that nice and firm there. And that's going to start the foundation of my little design there. So as per my little sheet here, I need to do seven orange beads in the row. So I'll just do them very, very quickly using what's called ladder stitch. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'll add on one more bead. So coming out of the bead that I'm currently coming out of, I'll add one bead. I'll weave all the way back through the bead at the end that I'm uh, coming out of right now before I add the bead and then I'll go back down that bead one more time. So uh, I'll just pop that into the corner. So there we go. Actually, do you know what? Do we want it in right-handed view? Yes, I'm sure you do. Everybody always wants it in right-handed. So there you go. Now I'm right-handed. <laughs> Isn't that the magic of television? Um, so uh, now the next thing that we're going to do, as I said, I'll grab another one of my red beads and I'll just weave. So my thread is coming out this bottom side of the bead here. And what I'll do is weave into that bead again, pull it down, and then just make sure my two beads sit nicely side by side in a row like that. So see that? There we go. Nice and straight in a row like that. I'll flick, Helena says it's a bit different to see a lefty beading. Well, do you know what? I'll flick between left and right handed for you people. Um, Anya from Germany, she's new. Thanks for joining Anya. Lots and lots of people here today. Um, thank you all for joining. I'm uh, I'm really glad you all could be here. And don't forget, get your free pattern. Get it, get it, get it. It's a beautiful design. So um, now I'm going to just repeat that process again and again and again until I have seven beads. So you can see I've got three here. I need to do it four more times. So I'll weave up through the end bead and then down through the bead I've just added again. I'll do this on the table actually, so you can really see what I'm doing. And I'll zoom in a tiny bit closer even. How's that sound? As close as I can get. There we go, how's that looking? There we are. So with my thread coming out here, I'll pick up one more bead, go down through that last bead at the end, like so, see that? Pull it nice and straight, trite. And then back up through the same bead I just added to continue that ladder. Of course, it is much easier to do this in your hands because you can keep a better tension, but I want you guys to see really clearly what I'm doing. So uh, I'll just get that little instruzione out the way so that you can see exactly what you're doing. Um, yeah, so uh, let's grab one more bead. So I've got one, two, three, four, five now. I need to do till I've got seven, so I'll just make sure it's nice and firm. Uh, Maria Mendoza, you're here as well. I don't think I've seen your name before. Are you new, Maria, perchance? She's over on YouTube. Um, 
by the way, you know how I told you that we'd reached 17,000 subscribers on our YouTube? It is going crazy. You guys have been loving our videos. We're already at 17,200, and I only filmed on, on, the, on the weekend, and already where I'm just tightening my threads because they're on the on the table here. Yeah, we're already over 17,200. So it's literally flying upwards. It's snowballing, shall we say. So um, thank you to everyone who's been sharing and liking and sort of spreading the word about my my tutorials here, because, um, you know, the more the more the word spreads, the, the, the better it will be, I guess, the more we can do. Uh, I just got a little bit distracted by Wait a second. I should I should pick it up and make sure everything's nice and tight. There we go. Pull my tension nice and firm. Forgot what I was. Uh, I was too busy looking at everybody's comments. Um, there we go. Nice and tight. So uh, have I got that straight? Yes. There we go. Have I put that on right? Yes. There we are. Everything's back in position now. So there we go. I'll add on my next beat. Again, you can see when I put it down how much looser it is. So maybe I will pick it up just to make sure that they stay nice and tight. If you do get a bit loose, you can just hold the beads and pull your thread and it'll sort of bring them back into position a bit more. But it doesn't matter if it's a bit loose. It'll get tightened up when we start doing our brick stitch work on the top. So I'll just do the last one Oops, here on the table. And then I think I might pick it up so that it stays nice and firm. So. Uh, our last little bead, again, to make our row of seven. There we are. And then back up through that bead, get it nice and firm. And pull it nice and tight there. So there we go. So now that I have my little row of seven beads here, uh, I'll just show you, I'm going to go through the beads one more time, these last two beads, just to sort of increase the strength of my thread bridge that goes between the beads. If you don't know what a thread bridge is, don't worry, I'm about to explain it to you. Oops, my needle came off. Um, but yes, so as I said, uh, see how my needles just come off? This is the great thing about the Spidalon beading thread because it doesn't fray. So even if I, like it keeps coming on and off and on and off and on and off, it doesn't fray and I can get it back onto my needle really easily. Look at that. How good is that? Best thread in the universe, I tell you. What made you choose today's colours? Well, if we uh, if we say Maxine made me choose them, that would be the, the definite what. But, you know, the funny thing is, I absolutely love how nice the finished design is. Um, I just thought that the, because I've, I've, I've been enjoying using opaque colours of late, so I'll just zoom out so you can actually see it. And because like, I kind of like the flame look about it, it, it's sort of really fun and it's summery and it's vibrant and it's, it's, it's fun. It's a fun design and I thought they were fun colors. But obviously you will see a bit later, there's another design that I have, which is what I'm gonna use to finish off. Um, but that one is a little bit more interesting. I think you guys, do you know what? I'm gonna show you now. Um, uh, another little design which, the, the the Brits or the Americans here, I think, will particularly like this design. It's uh, red, white, and blue, and then all higgledy-piggledy at the bottom. So just to show you how much you can vary the tassels, just to have a bit of fun with it and change it. Or, um, you know, or if you prefer, you just go with the, the two colors, and it's a bit more elegant. It's really easy to sort of play with the design and make it a bit different and really fun. Um, so now that I have my little row of beads there, what I'm going to do is, whoops, I'll pop the instructions nice and big on the screen here. There we are. So what I'm going to do, because I need to extend the size of the row, which if we just have a quick look at my pattern here, so see how it's, oh wait, I need to take it back from being mirrored. There we go. So see, I'm right here. So what I need to do now is make my next row a little bit bigger. So see how it sticks out on this row? I need to extend the size of my row. And this little diagram just here shows you exactly how we do that. So when it comes to brick stitch, what you do, we're working with our thread bridges, which are essentially not Jeff bridges, thread bridges. Um, crappy joke, I know, but don't worry. I'm well aware. Uh, so if we have a little look, I'll just zoom in. So see how you can just see there, right? Nice and zoomed, there we go. Uh, so you can see just here, 
there's my little bridge of thread that joins these two seed beads together. When it comes to brick stitch, I want my next bead to sit directly in between the two beads below it. So the best way to do that is to attach my bead to the actual thread bridge. Jermaine didn't like my joke about Jeff Bridges. Doesn't matter, I did. So, you know, that's the important thing. Um, so yeah, um, as you can see, there's my little thread bridge there. By the way, who, which of the three different designs did you guys like best? Who likes the flame? Who likes the, uh, the red, white, and blue? And who likes the turquoise and white? Um, <coughs> Sue said, that's okay. I laughed at your crappy joke. So did I, Sue. So did I. So as per my design, because I'm going to use the yellow beads now, whoops, can't get it in screen there. There we go. I want to use the yellow beads to increase my size. So I need to pick up two yellow delicas and one, two. Essentially, like the diagram, go underneath that little thread bridge there, joining the two beads. See that? So my thread is now underneath that little bridge of thread, and that gives me something to sort of have a bit of purchase on when my beads come together. So if I pop it sideways, you can see the two beads are now sitting roughly above that little section there. So now with my second bead just here, I'm going to come back up through just the second bead, not the first one, just the second bead only. And that will bring it into position. Whoops, sorry, getting a bit out of screen there. So through that second bead, doesn't matter if it comes a tiny bit loose, it will tighten in a second. And then you just pull, 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 nice and tight. And then you can see it sits perfectly on top of the beads below. So that's the great thing about using delicas because they have a sort of square shape. Um, I, uh, everybody says they love the flame best. <laughs> I'm glad you all like it. Well, that's what I'm demonstrating with. So anyway, um, the, the, the beads sit perfectly on top, which is great about delicas. By the way, if you need any delicas, I know a lot of you will probably have delicas already, but if you don't, uh, have a look. There's a link up there in the description that will take you to our website. We've got 160 colors and even more are going to be coming later this week when our next, uh, when our restock arrives after how crazy you guys have been going. So next step, I need to, oh, weave back up my bead. I, I guess I jumped ahead and showed you that already. So yeah, under the thread bridge and then back up that next bead. So essentially what I'll do now is continue along. I know it's flipped over, but just ignore it. Pretend it didn't do that. Um, so what I'll do now is pick up just the one bead, go underneath the next um, little thread bridge and then up the bead again. So pick up one bead under that thread bridge and then up that bead. I'll just pop that into the corner now. Again, it's a yellow bead underneath that thread bridge oops there we go see there we are underneath my thread bridge pull it nice and tight and then back up through that same bead and pull nice and tight and it's locked in position there we go this is where my hand needs to be for filming good okay so now i'll just repeat that until i get all the way to pretty much the very very end of my row so like I said, it doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit loose just now because it is going to become tighter as we do our brick stitch along. So try and keep my hand in position. Pull, 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 pull. It's important that you make sure that you don't cross your thread. So see how my thread here, I want to make sure it doesn't, this thread, which is the one I'm working with, pass inside of this loop because that's how you get yourself a bit tangled. It's a bit of an issue. You've got to make sure that your thread is going like this, sort of that nice weaving shape so that it doesn't get tangled. So see that? See how it closes nice and easily? I'll show you what happens if it's a bit tangled so that you know what it will look like, just to sort of give you the idea. If you, oops, I'll go underneath that thread bridge. I'll try. There we go. If you go under that thread bridge and then just say you've accidentally pulled your needle inside of this little loop of thread that you're creating, so like this, for example, you'll see it doesn't want to quite see how my thread is. Wait, get it in position. See how it's inside that loop. If you pull that, it's not quite going to be in the right position. You need to make sure you don't accidentally go through that little thread of bead breeds because it won't, your bead won't quite sit right. So if ever 
you find yourself, it's always important to check it before you pull it down, that it's not getting all tangled so that when you want to come back up again, oops, just grab it there. This is a nice way I like to keep my tension. I pinch my thread under there and then just, how's that for a tip, eh? Top tips from Matthew. What do you think about that? Um, so there, there you go. And now it stays nice and neat. Um, uh, so Marie says, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all having a fabulous day. I am, and I hope you are too, Marie. Um, she says, I've never done anything like this, so must really must have a go. Uh, she's enjoying this tutorial. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Don't forget, everyone, the... Um, the pattern's for free, so grab the link up in the description and get the pattern for free, which I'll just pop the little thing that tells you about that there at the bottom so that you can see it because I want you to go and get that pattern, um, you know, no strings attached. Just go onto the website and place an order for it and it will be in, Will it'll be emailed to you pretty much straight away. Um, you don't have to pay for it, even though you have to do it as like an order. It says, OK, yeah, you know, give us your card details, but you don't actually have to do any of that process. It just goes um, straight into your basket. You don't have to you know, do anything funny. You just it just sort of allows us to apply it to your account. So if you do it as an order that way, if you have an account on our website, you can access your download at any time. So if you lose the file, you can just come straight back to our website and get it again. That's why we do it as an order rather than just sort of emailing you the thing because ooh, I nearly did the wrong bead there, not paying attention. Uh, another yellow one. Oh yeah, this is an important step. I should I should tell you more about this. So when we come to the end, how you add on an extra bead to extend the size of your row you want to go maxine's just joined us hi maxine um she's back at home and i'm here in the bead studio uh so yeah uh these this bead little here when you want to extend your row again we pick up one little bead i think i may have put a little diagram let's have a look i think i've got the instruction there Yes, so you can see it just there. You pick up one bead and you go under through the previous thread bridge. So from the row below, you go through that thread bridge and then back up the bead just the same as always. So I'll just pop that there so that you can see it. Um, wait, no, wrong one. There we go. By the way, all of these diagrams, if you, if you haven't seen and you want to get them, um, all of these, uh, I'll just pop it back onto the website and I'll show you very, very quickly. Um, so here, this is our home. This is the home page of our website. Again, if you click on this view bead address related products or click the link in the description that says, you know, bead address related products, here's the free pattern. But if you've never done brick stitch, grab our little brick stitch complete guide book because all of these diagrams and loads, loads more, pretty much any situation you might ever come up to uh, with brick stitch is covered. So how to extend the rows, how to reduce the size of rows, all of that sort of information, it is in there. So, and it's only three pounds, a little booklet there that I've made for you guys. So, and it covers a lot of information. So hopefully you will um, get some good use out of it. If you've never done brick stitch, it's a fantastic little, um, uh, I guess, booklet full of information and tutorial. So like I said, I'm going to just thread now into position and up that little bead just here so get in there there we go and pull that nice and tight and then you can see i'm now finished my row uh ready to continue on with my pattern so if we have a little look at what i need to do now well first things first let's zoom out come on now here we go. So I've done my first row and now I've come back and I've done my second row. And what I need to do now is start my third row. So essentially it's all yellow beads again, exactly the same. And I'll keep just weaving up. I'll do it really, really quickly. This is a great time to, uh, Sherry says, I got the pattern. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you've got it there, Sherry. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a great time. I'm going to just weave back and forth so you can watch me doing it. But if you've got any questions, if you want to know things, now's a great time because I am going to just sort of be beading away until we get up to that little section of the bodice at the top where things get a little bit more interesting. Uh, and you might go, how am I meant to do this? Well, um, I, I will get to that. But of course, that is also the sorts of things that you'll learn um, on the... Uh, in that little booklet I told you about. So 
Again, I'll pick up two beads like I did before. Let's get this instruction out of the way, shall we? Um, I don't think we need to see that one anymore. I'll just pop at the bottom the materials I'm using so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so yeah, picking up two beads. Let's zoom back in again. Oh, went too far. There we go. So pick up two beads, go underneath the thread bridge, pull that nice and tight. There we go, nice and tight. And then through that bead and up again. Anya, uh, no, that's Jermaine asking things there. Um, yeah, so um, comment away, guys. Now's the time to be commenting and asking me things because I'm just going to be beating away, chatting about nothing um, while I get myself into position. I would have got myself a little bit more prepared to try and do that bodice, but I guess today was not the day for that because... Uh, the number of orders that we had over the long weekend from our Florentine, um, uh, the special on our Florentine, which if you haven't seen what that looks like, um, I'll show you one of the finished necklaces in just a second, because that is still on sale and we are doing the, the special still on the 120 twins pattern sheet. Um, so yeah, you, you'll get all 120 patterns of the Florentine for free if you get any of our if you buy the bundle which is any two for for 32 or whatever it is um but yeah so you can see the brick stitch it does come along really really quickly um as you once you get the hang of it because once you know what you're doing especially once you've done the first two rows you've got something to hold on to and so it's a lot firmer a lot easier to sort of work with and you can really blast it out very very quickly um obviously if you've never done brick stitch before uh, can you show slower how to add the last bead on the row? Yes, I will. So, uh, I'm at that point pretty much now. So, good time. The questions just come in just at that point. So, oops, stabbed myself with the needle there. The last bead in the row, I will show that one more time, nice and slow. So, here we are. I'm at that point. I'm in left-handed view, by the way. Um, Helena says, got the pattern and bought the guide. Have a look at the guide, uh, Helena. Look through it and then comment back and tell us what you think of it. You know, tell us if you think it's worth just three pounds. Maybe it should have been more. Anyway, so as per Sherry's request, I'm going to do this last bead nice and slow so that you can see. So exactly the same. I'll pick up my little yellow bead and then I'm going to go underneath the thread bridge that's between these two beads just here. So I'll do it from the front. So the best way, you can't really see the thread bridge because the bead here is on top of it. If you press your needle into the gap between the two beads, you end up underneath that thread bridge. So even though I've got a bead here already, once you do that, I'll pull it nice and slow through there. And you can see that will, it sort of pops. It doesn't quite want to sit into position just yet. But now that my thread is under the thread bridge i can just use my finger to push oh yeah i'll, I'll um so i'll push that into position and then you can see now if i go underneath get it a little lower underneath and up through that bead just the same as usual when you pull that it just sits nicely into position there beside this little bead here. So using that same thread bridge, which if I just show you the instruction very, very quickly. Um, so there you go. What I did, I picked up a bead. I went under the previous thread bridge and then up that same bead again, just to get it nice and neatly into position. By the way, guys, don't forget, um, I'll just pop it on the screen for you. If you want to get featured on the show, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk. Um, I am here alone. Jermaine and Andrew aren't here, but I think Andrew's watching and potentially going to be sorting out your pictures so I can show them at the end of the show, I think. Uh, so let's continue on. Have a nice sip of tea from my Matthew mug. Um, so uh, next row, I need to continue upwards now. I'll put it back into right-handed mode. I've done, if we have a look, so I've got one, two, three. So that's one, two, three. Now I've got to do one last row fully of yellow, and then I'll get back to bringing in my flame color. So uh, I'll show you how to start the row one more time just to show you it. 
uh, but I'll do it in left-handed view and then I'll flick back to right-handed view. So with my thread coming out of this bead, you go two beads onto your needle and you go underneath that final thread bridge. I'll just hold my thread here to make sure my tension stays tight so that my thread bridge stays nice and firm. Go under there, pull that tight. They both sit relatively in position like so, but you just go up the first bead only. There you go. Sherry says, thanks so much. Very clear now. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad uh, I'm glad I could help you out. See, this is the best part. If you've got a question and you want to know something, ask it to me in the comments. I'm watching, I'm reading, I'm trying to see them all. Um, uh, so, Nancy, could you do two beads at once on the end like you did in the beginning? Do you know, um, you can, but you kind of have to go a bit around the houses. So it, it is possible to do it like that, but your, your, your two beads, you, you have to weave through them again. You'll see it when I reduce a row, because uh, I will be doing that soon. I'll show you what happens. Uh, it, it, the, they don't quite sit in position, and you have to sort of weave through your beads again and again and again. And I find, personally, you can go under and add two beads at the end, but I personally prefer to do them one at a time, because I'm, uh, I find them that they sit neater, cleaner, sort of closer together without having to go around the houses so much of threading around and through and so forth to try and get them to sit straight. Plus, if both beads have a, a connection to the thread bridge, they're more secure as well. Um, by the way, top tip from Matthew here, if ever you make a mistake, don't try and thread your needle back down because if ever you accidentally catch your thread, pierce your thread with the end of your needle or anything of that nature or or tangle them inside of a bead, you will give yourself yourself a headache that is 10 times worse than uh, than just trying to take the needle off and re-thread the needle. I mean, I'm I'm a bit of a lazy person sometimes and I'm like, oh, I couldn't be bothered to take the needle off and re-thread the eye and all of that. Um, but if you do, you you will find that it is much, much easier to to sort of start again if you don't um, if you don't try and use the needle, just just re-thread the eye of your needle and and save yourself the hassle. So I'm doing my last bead one more time, just here on the end. I've added it under that thread bridge, back up, and then I'm going to flick it back into right-handed view for the next row when I start adding my flame beads in again, getting ready on that collar section. Um, how's everybody finding today's tutorial? Nice and informative, enjoying it? Come on, comment in. I'm not getting enough comments. I want more comments. Give me more. <laughs> um, so there we go. I want, you know, chat between each other as well. There's a lot that you can do. So uh, I'll just add on now my next row. If we have a look, I've got to do a red bead followed by a yellow bead. So that's what I'm going to be doing next. You add your red bead first, then your yellow bead, and then you go underneath that thread bridge. So here we go. If I pick up my beads on the needle, I'll show you. I pick up my red bead first, then I pick up my yellow bead. And now what I'll do is, first things first, actually, as promised, I'll put it back into right-handed view. There we go. Um, Eileen says, you are great, very clear and pleasant. I'm glad you think so, Eileen. Um, if you haven't done so, there's a little link up in the, the description there that says um, subscribe for more tutorials. Um, uh, and that is a great way to get onto our email list. Like, for example, the people who are on our email list, we already sent them an email of the pattern this morning so that they don't have to go to the website and all of that. It's right there in your inbox, so it's really easy to get um for you. Um, also, if you're on YouTube, um, just wait, no, now it's right-handed view, just here, there's a little button if you're on YouTube, it says, if you click that little button, it will subscribe you to our YouTube channel, because we do put a lot of videos on our YouTube channel, additional to just our live tutorials. So definitely, if, you've, if you're on Facebook even, head over to YouTube and just search in YouTube for Bead Spider, our channel will come up and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel from there as well, just like the 17,200 and some odd other people.
So um, let's have a little look. Oh, uh, oh, I missed it. Let's see. Wait, wait. Uh, I just had a little comment in um, about the quality of our little instruction there. Helena said the guide, the, the guide is super clear, lovely diagrams and easy to understand. I have had problems with decreasing, but with this, I will manage it as a piece of cake. Um, I don't know what you're talking about when you say bad spelling. Everything seems to be spelling spelt perfectly. Um, I'm just terrible at spelling as well, I guess. Um, well worth the money. You could charge more. Well, I'm not going to. It's only going to be three pounds, but I'm glad you think that it's well worth the money. Um, so thank you, Helena, over there on Facebook. Um, so let's continue on with our pattern. I do have to keep in mind that when I get to the middle of this row, because I want to start the V shape in my collar, I need to, I'm doing this row here, all right, put it back in the right way so that we can see it. So I'm just here, I've done my B, my A, I need to do a few more A's, and then when I get to the middle here, I need to do a red bead instead of another yellow. So we'll see that in a second. So there's three yellows, four yellows actually, one, two, three, add in my third yellow, make sure you get right underneath that thread bridge. Um, can you repeat how to get the free pattern? So the easiest way Sarah's asked, how do you get the free pattern? The easiest way, Sarah, is in the description, because I see you're in Facebook, it's just above. Uh, there's a little thing that if you click on it, it will take you um, straight to the page. But otherwise, um, just down here in the bottom, see the the, the beadspider.co.uk. If you click on, if you type that into your web browser, um, you know, you can do it on your phone as well. Um, it will take you to the Beatspider homepage, which looks like this. If you're on mobile, it looks like pretty much exactly the same, but just the big picture at the beginning. There's a button just here that says v view beaded dress related products. Click on that little button. And then here you go, you can see, here is that free pattern. You just click add to basket. And there you go, it adds it straight to your basket, which is up here in the top corner. Um, and then if you also want our brick stitch, the complete guide, you just click add to basket. And then there they are. If you view your basket straight there and pop them, proceed to checkout. There they are. And if you're logged in, it'll be on your my account page ready for you. Whenever you're ready, you can download it again and again and again if you need to. Uh, so let's just get back on with the tutorial, shall we? Um, I'll add one more bead and then I'm pretty much in position, I think, to... Why is the camera so wobbly? Don't know what's going on there. Um, yes. So let's uh, add on our next few beads and continue on as we were. I can see all the comments now. Hopefully that answered your question there, Sarah. So thank you for asking that one. And maybe I need to just, there we go, that should hopefully fix it. Um, yes, so yellow bead now, pick that one up and then through that little spot there. And now it's time that I'm in the center of my row to start adding the beads for my collar. So I'll do my collar in red. If you prefer, you can do it any color you want. Like for example, in this design here, I've done my sleeves and my body piece in white and my collar's blue. You can do exactly the same if you want to. Um, it's entirely up to you. So I've got my red and uh, where are we? Let's make sure I've got all my, um, there we go. Um, Add on the next bead there, through there, pull that tight. This might be a bit of a long tutorial today just because I didn't have time to prepare it. So I can't do, here's one I made earlier, you know, the magic of television where all of a sudden, like you put something in the oven and instead of waiting for 40 minutes, it's uh, cooked 10 seconds later. I didn't have time for that, unfortunately. So it's gonna be a little bit slow, but once I get past this, I might just make the dress look a little bit funny, but you know, we'll live. Um, here we go. There we are. So I'll pull that up and continue along all the way. And then we're almost in position to decrease a row, which I know this is a little tough for some people. They say, oh, that's a bit tough. How the hell do you do that? Or um, things like that. But hopefully I can make it as easy as pie for you. Uh, let's see. There we go. One more. Add on one last bead. And then I need to add on my last little red bead as well. And then all will be fine and dandy and ready to continue on. Um, so yeah, come on guys, get part, get involved in the conversation. 
start chatting with me, chat with each other. Tell me what you've been getting up to. I want to know, you know, how you people in the UK, uh, who it's a long weekend, what have you been doing with your long weekend? Um, who, what, what has everybody else been getting up to? You in the US, people in the US, uh, what time is it? Where are you? All of these sorts of things. Comment in, be part of the conversation. So now where I'm up to, you can see I'm here. I need to reduce the size of my row. So this is where things, um, Kelly's asked, how long are they? I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to have to comment in again. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, how long or what? Uh, so, uh, yes, I'm going to reduce the row here. So now that I've got a few beads just here, what I'm going to do by reducing this row, uh, I've got to essentially, I'll show you the, I, I, I don't know if I've got a diagram here, but I'll just have to show you it. It's quite an easy little process. So to make this row a little bit shorter, it is a bit of a around the houses process, but uh, it is the best way of not having any thread showing, but it stays nice and neat. So in this particular one, I need to pick up one red bead followed by one yellow bead. And then instead of going through that first little thread bridge, I'm going to go underneath the second thread bridge. So when you go underneath there, make sure you go completely under the thread bridge. You've got to try not to pierce the thread bridge. How long are the earrings? So the earrings themselves, you can completely alter the design yourself. I, I'll, I'll tell you in just a second. Um, so you can see I've gone under there now. And then when I come back up, I go through just that bead just there, the, 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 the second bead, same as before. But when you pull it, see how this bead sort of sits a bit funny? It's a bit wonky. You can fix that by, as I said, go round the houses. So you go down there, under there, and then up that bead once more. So what I did essentially was go down this red bead. I didn't go under any thread bridges or anything like that. I just went up that bead there, and then that, you'll see, pulls that one neatly in there's a little thread going underneath the two beads and that pulls them neatly side by side. So uh, Kelly asks, how long are the earrings? So the tutorial itself will hopefully probably be about another half an hour or so. Um, but the actual length of the finished design uh, that we have here, uh, this particular one is probably somewhere in a region of about two inches because I made myself a nice long tassel section. My tassel's really, really quite long. I mean, you can make it even longer if you want to. Um, but if you compare it to the size of my, my finger here, it's about the length of my finger. So I would say that's probably about seven or eight centimeters, maybe two, two and a half inches long, maybe a bit more. But if you reduce the size of your tassels, like this one here, you can make the earring quite a bit shorter. See, oh wait, it's not in the screen. There we go. See, look, if you reduce the length of your tassels, you can make the earring much shorter. So it's entirely up to you how long you want the earring to be. Um, now, let's press on did we i'll go through how to reduce the row again in a minute just to make it extra clear for you i'll put it back into right hand of you um let's see um there we go there we go and now i'm just going to continue along there's a few things this this is sort of like the the hardest bit of the whole design that we're coming up to soon it is still very very easy but you know a little bit more fiddly um, so I'll continue along until I get to here. And now what I need to do is sort of create that V shape of my, my little necklace collar, uh, necklace, my neck collar, dress collar. So see how it moves out. Okay. You'll just have to live with the letters being backwards. Uh, so there they are. So I need to add two red ones and then three little, uh, three yellows and then one red one again. So. Here we go. One little red bead, same as before. And up there, and another red bead. Do you know, I was thinking, because this is a relatively involved and lengthy tutorial, I was thinking I might do another tutorial later that's not live, that I'll just put on YouTube and all of that and onto our Bead Spider website. So if you haven't, uh, what do you guys think about that? Do you think that's a good idea? Maybe a, a, not, not, 
necessarily sped up in terms of like fast forwarded but sort of just jumping between so that you don't have to watch me build the entire thing from beginning to end um there we go let's keep going uh but yeah what do you think do you reckon that would be a good idea it's because i guess then it makes it a bit more consumable danielle says i love brick stitch beading i'm glad you do and i'm glad you've joined us for this tutorial don't forget everyone if you want uh you know i'd very much appreciate if you want to like share subscribe um all of those um sorts of things so that we can sort of spread the word and get people watching my my little tutorials here so I need to reduce the row one more time. I'm over here and wait, I'll come over. I'm over here now. So I need to reduce my row one more time again. Um, so again, I'll go through it nice and slowly. I pick up one red bead and one yellow bead. And then I go underneath, not the first, but the second thread bridge. So underneath that thread bridge, And then back up just the first bead for now. Pull it nice and tight and then see how he goes a bit wonky. We're going to fix that up. Um, go down that bead there and up that one there. Now, Stacy, she just said, I forgot you were going to be on this morning and scheduled a grocery pickup and we'll have to go soon. Well, there's a simple solution for you, um, for anyone who doesn't have time to watch the whole thing now. Um, let me just show you again on the Bead Spider website. Um, where am I? Here I am. So there we go. Yes, again, if you come to the home page, if you click this big picture, anytime you want to watch this video, here it is right here, ready to watch. And you can click it on and here's me live about 30 seconds ago so you can see i'm coming onto the website and if at any time you want just rewind and watch back whatever it is that you want to see but also see this little button here hit that little button and click subscribe so that you can be notified when we do other tutorials because that's the best way to be notified and on uh and knowing what's going on but you can also see further down here here's our brick stitch guide here's um, a link to all of our my yuki colors as well if it'll load here we go you can see we've got um internet's running a bit slow uh there you go we've got 160 colors or so and i've got them all nicely in color order so it's super easy for you to go through and go here's a nice blue this is what i want go to the next page so forth that's uh we've got lots and lots of delicas for you to choose from so head on there and oh there so many they haven't even loaded there we go um and take a little look uh, so yeah, um, do, 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 let's come back to me over here, shall we? Yeah, great. Um, and let's open up my comments again. I can't see them when I'm showing the internet. Um, there we go. So let's just continue on now. I'll just pop this down. And what I'm going to do, things get a little bit uh, different here. This is where people might go, well, how am I meant to do this? Well, I'm about to show you. Um, let me just one second pop this here. Yeah, if you want to get, um, we release new tutorials every week and patterns and things like that. So there's a link up there in the description that says subscribe for more tutorials and whatnot. If you click that link, you will be um, on the list and getting those little emails when we release our new patterns. So I'll just get myself into position. One more bead, one more red one to continue that sort of V shape outward. But what's a little bit different here, because I need to sort of add my little bead, uh, I need to sort of make it go outwards again, I will stop here and I'm not gonna weave and I'm not gonna go across here. There's a gap here. So if we look at the, the little pattern, there's a big fat gap right in the middle. So you might wonder, how am I gonna do this? Um, well, this is how you do it. So again, I need to reduce my row so that it'll continue that V shape upwards. So one red one, one yellow one. Skip the first thread bridge and go straight to the second one. Pull it tight. Go up that bead. 
Oops. And we'll go around the houses real quickly. Oh, I'm out of screen, sorry. There we go. And there we go as well. Pull nice and tight. And now we're back in position, ready to continue on. So I'll do one more yellow as per my little pattern, which don't forget, guys, if you want the pattern, it's for free. Jump onto the website. There's a link in the description to get it. Uh, I know I've said that many a time, but people, it keeps showing me new people are coming on and off all the time. So I'm just reminding all of you who are, who've only just joined us, because I see uh, a little wave of people have only just joined now. Um, I think maybe... Uh, don't forget to, to like and share the video, guys, because that's the best way to get more people to watch. Um, so I'll add on my last bead, extending the row. There we are. Pull that nice and tight there. Oh, by the way, if you sign up to that little link in the description, we're giving away five pounds worth of patterns for free. So you get a little voucher emailed straight to you for five pounds worth of patterns. Um, I'll just come back. I've only got to do, do I have to do one more row? Yes, one more row. And then that will have my the top of my dress pretty much ready. Um, oh, so Sheila, she said she can't find the code. You should have been emailed with a code straight away. As soon as you... Um, sign up, uh, yeah, as soon as you sign up to our little newsletter there, you will also be emailed um, a, a little code that says, thanks for, uh, the, the email subject is like, here's a gift for you, or thanks for joining, or something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, oh, whoops, I'm not paying attention. So this is one of those times when you're not paying attention, you make a mistake. Pull your thread, take your needle off, and just undo your beadwork instead of trying to weave backwards. I was meant to extend the row. I accidentally started shortening it, but you want to extend the row. So there we go. It's undone. It's back ready now. And all I've got to do, you can see, even though I've been beading lots with it, it's still perfectly good, this little thread. And I can just thread it back on. It's good quality thread. Um, and then under there, Oops, there we go. Pull that tight and back up that first bead. Come on now, get in position. Here we go. Come on now. There we go, there we go, there we go. So there, now I'm back in position again. Get it all nice and tight, pull it nice and firm. One bead more. Pull it again through that little bead. Get that thing out of the way, shall I, at the bottom? Um, I'll just put it at the bottom about our, actually, I'll just get rid of it for now. You don't want to see it a little ticker the whole time. There we go. Add on one more red bead. And pull that nice and firm. And up here as well. There we go. And then that's the first side of one of our little collar pieces at the top of our of our dress. So what I need to do now is weave back down and bring my thread so that it's coming out just here. So I'll weave down into uh, this bead just here. Uh, and then down again, wait a minute, if I end up here, I'll be there, there, there. Okay. So I'll go down this bead just here. And down a few more so that I'm back into the row that I need to be in. There we go. Plus, when you do that, it sort of pulls everything nice and tight. And now I'll just weave across from bead to bead. So my coming out of this one, I'll go here, then here, then here. So up this bead, down this bead, and then up this bead as well. 
And now I'm in position, we can pretend almost that I'm starting a new row from here. So there's a gap there. So what I'll do, because I need to reduce the size of the row, I'll pick up one red bead and one yellow bead. I'll go under the second thread bridge. And then through this little bead here, back up, and then round the houses to get that little bead nice and neat. So down, and then back up that little bead. There we go. And essentially, we just continue that process exactly the same to make this side match the other side. Um, Kathleen says, can we replay this video tutorial later? Yes, if you're on YouTube right now, Kathleen, I think you can even rewind right now. Just the little scrubber at the bottom, just rewind right now, I think. Uh, on YouTube, you can do that. Um, so yeah, so exactly, you just continue on exactly the way that you did this other side. I won't do it right now because I will show you sort of how to come to it again later. Uh, but essentially, I'm going to move on now. I was going to sort of make this little bottom piece as well but essentially you don't want to just see me beading for the next four years just doing brick stitch the whole time so i'm going to sort of move on kelly asks how's my tea it's freezing cold kelly my tea is cold as always <laughs> um sue a man who talks about his beads gotta love him well do you know what maxine calls me the beardy beader so maybe maybe that should be maybe that should be my my new name is the beardy beader um but yeah, so I'm going to jump ahead now to my other colorway of design. I'll, I'll talk about this particular one because essentially the way that you have to finish your little design off, one second, is once you've made the bottom half, get this out of the way, once you've made the bottom half of your dress, ignore this little top piece for now, I'll come to that later, uh, but yeah, once you've made the entirety of your little dress, you need to weave your thread so that it's coming out of one of these corner beads. It doesn't matter which one. So either this one here or this one here. So this is why our tail thread is so long, because we need to use this little thread to, so here's the one that I did earlier. We're going to use this thread to make the bottom of our dress, but also all of those little tassel -y pieces. So that's why you need a relatively long thread and a super long tail. Um, let me just, where's my needle gone? Still attached. There we go. So essentially what we're going to do, once you've got your thread coming out of this little section just here, I'll show you in my diagrams. Oh, I don't have it. Okay, I'll have to show it to you. Whoops, with the with the with the paper, shall I? Uh, let's zoom out. Flip it back. Here we go. So once you've got your little thread, you've made the bottom of your dress. You make sure that your thread is coming out on one of these little corners just here. And what we're going to do is with my thread coming out of this corner, you just create the design of your tassel. So for example, this little dress just here, what I've done is graduated my little rows. And so I've gone with, to get that graduation of color, I've gone with five little yellow beads. And then what I like to do to graduate the color is you alternate them for six beads. So orange, then yellow, then orange, then yellow, then orange, and so forth. And then you can sort of start your second color in earnest, do it for a little bit, and then your third color, you do the same again. So red, then orange, red, then orange, um, and then you finish off with red. So there's two different ways, and then essentially what you're going to do, which I'll show you this once, um, this is, uh, there we go. So I'll show you how to make one of these just once, but essentially that's how I've done it with this one. So you get that graduation of color like this, and then you just weave back up. I'll show you the next little diagram here. You weave your thread all the way back up your beads. You go into the bottom of your dress section, the bodice piece, I guess. Move over across one bead and back down again to continue doing your beads and you just continue extending them. I do it by two, however it is that you want to do it. 
to uh, to make them that little bit longer. I find that by doing them by two, because of the way that I graduate the colors, it gives you a nice V shape when they sit side by side as well. So that works quite nicely. So you see, see how they're still in straight lines almost. It sort of makes the graduation look quite nice. Um, but that's how I do it. That's that's my way of doing it. And then all I do is just increase the number of beads at the top here. And then everything from here down is exactly the same. So anyway, I'll show you how to, to do that. Uh, unfortunately, I've because I didn't have one prepped, I couldn't show you the beginning, but essentially what I'm gonna do, there's two different ways as well to finish the ends. I'll show you the first one and then I'll come back and show you the second one. So this is my red, white and blue little dress, which is super fun, I think. Um, and what I'm going to do essentially is make this one the same as the opposite side over here. So I need some blue ones and then it ends up just being a big hodgepodge at the end, which I think is super fun to play with. Um, so I've got to do, a little row of some blue ones, then I'll add a red one, maybe a couple of extra uh, white one, a couple of extra red ones, then I'll go maybe another white one. Then I think I might just alternate reds and blues because I think it's quite fun. Finish with, how long does it need to be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and then seventeen. So let's swap these two. Because I try and finish my tassels so that they're the same each time. But then it's got a hodgepodge in the middle, which I think is quite fun to play with. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's do one little tassel. So the, the process of your tassels is exactly the same every time. It doesn't really change. So that's uh, the, the good thing about it. So I'll just thread on my, my needle here. Which again, the spider lawn makes it super easy to do. Um, and then I'll pick up all of my beads in the order that I want to do them. So one, two, three, four, five, a white one, a couple of red ones. Thread them all on. To my needle here. So there you go. So I've got them all on. That's essentially going to be my tassel. Uh, like I said, I do want them to graduate a little. So this one is two beads shorter than the previous one. I'll thread it all the way down to the end there. And then the way that you do this particular one, like in that diagram, you, whoops, where it is, you skip this last little bead on the end and you go up all the other beads. So I'm not going to go through that bead, but I am going to go through all the other ones. So skip this last little bead. Go up my little dress tassel section here, all the way through. You don't have to do all of the beads at once. You can sort of go halfway. I, in fact, I'll do that just so, to show you. You go halfway up, and then you can just continue up through the rest of your beads. And back into the dress section of your design. So I'll just zoom in so you can see what I've done. So this is the last bead on the end of my little dress bodice piece. I'll go up there. And, oops. So yes, um, did someone ask about Spidalon? Yes, so Spidalon, it is something that we, um, what have I done? There we go. Uh, it was something that we went out and, f and sort of had worked with a, a company and had them do that it's a little bit different because sort of the experience of beading Eslon and Ceylon they're good but because they're not bonded or anything they tend to fray and they get hairy and all of this and I'm not a big fan of that oh I just realized I've missed one of my beads in my my tassel here just unpull that little thread and make sure I don't miss one go back there but yeah so Spidalon yes I missed a bead I know so there you go. I'm Mr. Bead and I'm Mr. Bead. I'm the hairy beater. No, the beaded bead. I don't even know. Um, but yeah, so I'm Mr. Bead. I'll go through that one and then into my body piece. But yeah, spider on thread. It's something that we, we um, uh, it's actually from furniture making this particular thread. They use it for furniture, which 
uh, the purpose of it is perfect, much like how fire line is like a, a fishing line, essentially. This one is actually for furniture making, this particular thread. But the perfect, uh, the, 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 um, it, it's the perfect thread for doing beading just because it's bonded, it's very, very fine. It's a super strong weight, uh, uh, super strong thread as well, but quite fine. Uh, it's really, really good quality thread, um, perfect for doing your beadwork. And because it's pre-bonded, it's a little bit sort of, um, almost feels like it's rough or waxy. So it's great for, um, uh, great for for keeping your tension so now that i'm into the bottom of the body bodice piece if you wanted to continue with doing your next one you could just thread your needle down this little bead here and then you would do your next one and so forth and and and, and continue along doing every single one um uh, doing each of your little tassels one by one by one to whatever design it is that you takes your fancy so you know how i showed you it with in this one, how I just did it with just the last bead, there is another little design idea that you can do, which it's in the instructions and mentions it, which I think is quite fun, where you can actually do it with three beads. So you skip the final three beads and it makes these little tassely bits at the bottom of your, your little tassels. So you can see I did this one with just one and then I did all these ones with three, except for this one, which is just one as well. And now I'll show you how to add on your little ear wire to the top of your design and that essentially will finish off your earring. So with this piece just here, once you've made all of your tassels, you've got all of your little threads, there's something I might show you as well actually. There's a little technique which uh, I've shown it in a few other videos and a lot of people really like it but it's particularly useful for this particular design. So if you're in the middle of doing your tassels and you find that your thread is getting too short, there is something that you can do to extend the length of your thread, to bring in a new thread. It's called a weaver's knot. So I'll show you it very quickly and then I'll show you how to add on your ear wire and that will pretty much get to the end of your um, earring. So the way you do a weaver's knot, you take your piece of thread, a new piece of thread that you want to add on. So however long it is that you think you'll need, you cut it to whatever length that you want it to be. And then essentially we're going to tie a weaver's knot around this last little tail of thread. So just say this thread was really, really short and you wanted to extend it. What you do, you take your other thread. I'll just move this out of the way. You take your new thread and if this is the, the end of your thread and then you've got a really long piece down the bottom here that you want to continue uh, working with, how you do a weaver's knot, you take this piece and you create a little loop like this over the top. So see that? So that your thread is going around and then over the top of itself. So you need to have a little bit more than this here. So I'll just give myself a little bit extra there so that I've got a bit more. And then what I'm going to do is take this and put it inside this loop. So I'm not actually going to put the end of the tail. I'm going to keep that in there. I'm going to just create a little loop and then I'm holding this little bit of tail. And then so see that this is that little piece just there now. It's inside there. And then as I pull that, it creates a little noose almost there at the top. So what I do now if I just pull my thread a little bit tighter, I can take my other thread that I want to extend and you just put it inside of this little loop that you've created and then pull, 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 keep pulling, keep pulling. And then when you get to this point, when it's almost there, what you do, don't be afraid, just pull really, really hard until you hear a little there you go, a click noise. It gives this tiny little clicking sound. If you need to, you can always hold the two threads, these two together, that helps as well sometimes. And that will just help your little end not to come off anymore. Just pull it till it clicks. And then you've got a really firm knot on there now that's not going to come undone. Your thread now is significantly longer, but it's very important that you hear that 
click sound of the of the thread getting locked inside of the knot that you've created. It's extremely important that you do that. Otherwise, it's not going to stay. And then essentially, you can just continue weaving on as you were. So now let's just finish this little fella off here, this little design. And essentially what I'm going to do is weave on up there and come on out of this little bead right here at the very, very top corner. So, do you know what? I think I might do a video on that weaver's knot and I'll just put it on YouTube so that if anyone ever needs to, to see it, I, I, maybe I'll do it after this, I don't know. I'll do it soon though, sometime soon, maybe not today, but sometime soon and I'll put it on YouTube. This is how to do a weaver's knot. Um, now, essentially I need to make sure my thread is coming out of this little bead just here. So I'll weave, weave, weave all the way up through the edge of my dress um, and bring myself pretty much into position on the inside of that collar. So if we have a little look at the diagram, There's the little bead that we want to be coming out of. So there's the top of our dress. This is the bead we want to come out of. So let's just weave, weave, weave all the way up. Weave, 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 weave the whole day. Sorry about that, you know, a little interlude of singing there. Do you know, you wouldn't believe, it's like horrendously bad how much, how often I change the lyrics of songs to like um, either using the word bead or my personal favorite is to use my mum's name in it, uh, Jermaine. You'd be amazed how many songs you can change the words for and put the word Jermaine in. Like, um, like for example, my personal favorite is uh, the song, You're So Vain. You probably think this song is about you. So for Jermaine, I mean, she's not vain, but I enjoy singing. You're Jermaine. See, it works. You probably think this song is about you. I know you're listening, mother. She probably thinks this song is about her. Um, but yeah, I I do that all the time. It it I think I think it's it's my my little uh, signature trait that I that I always do, and it really annoys everybody that um you know when they want to listen to songs and things and i'm and i'm changing the uh the lyrics to to beads and gym people's names and all sorts um so there we go i've got my little bead now in position my thread's coming in position uh, i need to grab myself two of my blue beads here which I've got to get them out of the packet because I forgot to get them out in advance. But let's be honest, if I'd gotten them out in advance, I'm sure I would have lost them anyway. So I've got a few of my blue beads here, which these are the opaque cyan blue, color number 1138. So what I'm going to do now is, oh, I haven't got an ear wire either. Do I? No. Oh, well, I'm going to have to use a gold ear wire. I want to use a silver one, but... Maybe I'll, I'll swap it later. But anyway, I've only got a gold one to hand, but I can swap it later. But anyway, so what I'm going to do now is create a little loop at the top here for my ear wire to go through. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, but the first one I'll show you, well, I'll just show you the one. Um, what I'm going to do, you pick up two beads. So if I just show you the diagram here. What I'm going to do essentially is pick up two beads, go through my ear wire, pick up two more beads, and then I'm going to loop around so that I'm coming back ready to go through my beads again to secure it. So two beads through the ear wire, and then two more beads. Sorry about that singing, by the way. Dreadful. Um, there we go. Two beads, one ear wire and then down that little bead on the opposite side. So just that one there for now. And then as I pull that, just make sure it stays nice and nice, nice and tight in there. 
you know, Maxine had such a fun idea on something I should do with this, which I want to try it at some point, but not today. Uh, but essentially is to make the ear wire look like a little coat hanger so that at the back, there's like a little wire in this sort of coat hanger shape. Uh, and then and then hang the ear wire to the to the coat hanger. How cool would that look? Anyway, that was Maxine's idea, and I think I might try that at some point, but not today. So anyway, what I'm going to do now, now that I've got my little loop, like I showed you in that diagram, I'm going to weave down, weave across, weave back up, so that I can go back through that little bead just there. So down that one there. Come on now. My my tension's so firm, I can't even get through the beads. There we go. Down that bead there. Up this bead beside it. Come on now. I got caught. This is the uh, the risk of, of doing this after you do your fringes, is that it can get caught on your fringes. You can do it before you do your fringes if you want to. Um, so that they don't catch on but i just thought i would do it at the end because then i can show you how to finish off the thread so there we go pull that through go through that last little bead once more and now i'm back in position to weave back through these beads one more time so that my collar has something to hang off of but ear wire sorry there we go pull that nice and firm And then down there and down the next bead. And then across again, back up. I'm going to go through it one more time and then I'm going to finish off my thread. You can go through your ear wire more times. Like I recommend it. Go through your ear wire plenty of times just to make sure that it's, it's all firm. Ooh, caught on my little fringes again. Yep. There we go. Pull that up. But yeah, if you go through this multiple times, again and again and again and again and again, it'll be nice and firm and you won't have to worry about the thread coming undone or breaking or anything like that. It'll just be super secure. You can also use like a, a jump ring through, through one bead or something if you wanted to. Oops, sorry, I'm out of screen there. So there we go. And then that essentially will allow me to have a finished earring. How's that look? It's looking good, eh? Do you like it? What do you think? Um, yeah, I think that red one's really fun. Do you know, I guess it's a bit late now. This would have been perfect on the 4th of July. A bit late. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, let's go down. I can't believe how many orders. I just had a quick glance at how many orders have come through uh, for this free pattern uh but yeah there is ridiculous how many of you have been ordering it so jump on everyone get your free pattern don't forget about it i just had a quick glance um i'm gonna have like it almost makes me sad how many orders i have to fill today like um the 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 because i'm here by myself all on my lonesome luckily i've been coming in on the weekend and maxine's been helping me filling all the orders so i'm getting on top of them but clearly this uh doing this all by myself is going to be particularly daunting task so if your order's a little bit later than usual you'll know it's because it's just because it's poor little old me filling the orders all by myself <laughs> okay um uh where was me uh let's let's get this finished shall we um now last step i just need to weave this thread off cut it and then i'm done so the way that you finish off your threads you just what i like to do is just sort of go as i said round the houses so you go back and forth and back and forth through the same bead like so a couple of times let's put that little ticker at the bottom there eh? so that you can see um don't forget so this is uh the pattern the information about the patterns just there the links up there in the description um and then yeah just go back and forth back and forth around the houses again and again through that same bead again and again make sure you pull it nice and firm through there once more come on now there, there we 
go and then pull nice and tight so you can't see the thread anymore and then I'll just weave down a couple of others and then I'll cut it off there we go that'll do that's that done bring in your little beading snips or scissors whatever you've got and cut and there you go one finished little beaded earring how does that look what do you guys think of my little finished earring there does that look super cute do you love it are you gonna make one who's already downloaded the pattern who's still gotta get the pattern who wants to know how to get the pattern comment in let me know talk with me let me know what's happening but yeah did you enjoy that little tutorial um again obviously you just repeat the process all over again you can um, i'm being a bit pts uh, ptsd um ocd and sorting out my colors they're all a bit jumble together so while i'm talking to you i'm sort of sorting them all out uh but yeah so um exactly the same process again to make your second little dress and then you stick them in your ears and you wear them and then wait for everybody's compliments to come rolling in but yeah isn't that a fun little design i thought you guys might enjoy it um so here is my red white and blue so if you're um british american or maybe you're french you will all love this little red white and blue one for all sorts of different um events maybe they'd be really fun to wear for like a sports event maybe i should make a like a, a, a jersey for for sports teams that'd be fun so there's the, the the one color teal version as well and then this is the one i was demonstrating a bit earlier i need to finish my threads on this one but you know doesn't matter um, oh yeah, it would make a pendant. Jermaine said it could also make a pendant. So that's um, another little idea. Oh, um, I'll just show you as well. I said I was going to do it earlier. See, there's my my graduated flame one with the with the three colors that I'm using today, which if I zoom out, you'll be able to see them a tiny bit better. So there you go, the red, the yellow, and the orange. That's this flame one here. Uh, but yeah, then as I said, you can just sort of make the the, the tassels as long or as short as you want. You can use whatever color delicas that you want. Um, so if you've got them, you can even use it in seed beads if you want to make it a little bit bigger. But there you go. There is that beautiful little design. I hope you um, enjoyed it. Um, Sue says, do a football shirt. Do you know what? I think I will. Uh, I'm a Tottenham fan, so that'll be a nice, easy one. I just need white. Um, but yeah, that is your finished little design. You make a second one to match, uh, just like I have in the teal. There you go. There's the other one. Stick them in your ears and have fun. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah. Jan Alston said would also make some lovely bunting. You're right. Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot that you can do. The, the, the design of your little dress section, get creative, have fun, play, do lots of things. Um, if you wanted to, you could almost do like a tennis dress, forget the fringes and just make this little bottom section a bit longer. And then you've got like a tennis dress, uh, a mini skirt as Jermaine says. Um, let's see oh yeah that's what i said i was going to do um a lot of you have been going mental on our florentine kit so i'll just show you it very very quickly what the finished design looks like um i'll show you the one i demonstrated with shall i i've got them all here in my handy dandy feed design bag but yeah the tutorial that i did last Friday, just on Friday, just gone, was this beautiful necklace just here. It is still on sale. Let's get this little thing from the bottom out of the way, shall we? So you can actually see my necklace. Um, so yeah, this one here. Now this one uh, is still on sale. Uh, if I show you it just here, there's the finished design. Um, oops, it comes in lots and lots of different colors. The black and white, it's currently out of stock, I think, but I'm going to be getting more back in stock soon. This one is the Saint Tropez with the gold and the blue, which is my absolute favorite. I love it. The Tahiti as well here is fantastic. That one looks really, really nice. Um, that one is our Sienna. No, that one is our Capri blue. There's a Sienna one, which is this one just here, which looks really cool. But for the next few days until Sunday, um, 
you can get any two kits for £32. And if you get the £32 any two kits, you'll also get our Pyote Tube patterns completely for free, which uh, I'll just pop a link into... Oh, no. Whoops. Wrong button. Uh, I'll just pop a little link for you in just a second um, to that. Um, oh, apparently I've got one photo that's come through that I can have a look that's been sent through. So Damon has sent in a picture. So I'll just try and get that up on screen as well. Hopefully Jermaine or Andrew, because they're watching, can put the link to the Florentine kit up for you so that you can get this beautiful design um, or the any two for, you know, put the link, maybe they'll put the link for the air, any two for 32, because then that way you'll also get those 120 patterns. Um, so just as I always do, um, if you want to be featured on the show, like Damon is about to be, Andrew managed to get one photo done. So I'll have plenty to show you for Friday, but get your pictures in before Friday and I will show them off um, I'll just find Damon's picture real quick if I can. Um, and I will show you that one as well. Come on now. Um, so thanks for Damon to sending in your picture. He's been doing speeding as well. Uh, let's see, where's your photo, Damon? Uh, give me a few seconds. Oh, here we go. This looks great. This looks amazing. Okay, so Damon. Um, this is what Damon has been making recently. Hope you're all safe and well. So that there on the right, is that in Peyote Stitch or is that in Brick Stitch 2? Looks like maybe Peyote. Um, and then maybe is that Peyote with a twist on the left or is that crocheted? Uh, that looks fantastic. Great job there to Damon. That looks amazing. It's kind of similar to our Florentine, I guess. Uh, but yeah, that looks great. Thank you for sending that one in, Damon. Sorry I didn't have time uh, to get more pictures up. Uh, Kelly said she also sent a picture, but uh, I don't think Andrew's managed to process them in time just yet. But that looks fantastic. So thank you, Damon, for having uh, for making that. That looks absolutely spectacular. Um, but yeah, that was uh, that looks really really good. So that's uh, thank you for sending that in. But yes, yeah, so um, if you enjoyed my little earrings tutorial that I made today, uh, if you're going to make that. Don't forget, you can get the um, the uh, little pattern for free for the next well forever. It's it's not going to be it's not going to be going um, out of being free. It's going to stay free forever. But also um, but also the the little brick stitch uh, pattern booklet as well is great just because it will show you uh, Jermaine has also just popped that peyote tube necklace um, thing into Facebook I think it should be coming into YouTube shortly the link there hopefully she'll put it into to YouTube as well um, but if you want to get that Florentine necklace kit, which unfortunately this black and white one is is out of stock, but uh, all the other colors are still available. Um, the most popular, other than that one, that the black and white will be back in stock soon. Um, I'll be putting it back in stock soon, I think. Uh, but yeah, there's there's another one of the colorways there, and you also get the 120 patterns. By the way, Damon has just messaged in and he said that his little designs which i'll just show them real real quick the one on the right that is peyote and the one on the left is called um pie twist or peyote with a twist they call it uh so yeah thanks damon um and thanks for letting us know what those two stitches were um don't forget everybody you can get the pattern of this one for free from the link up there in the description the white's a bit washed out but you get all the instructions in there for some diagrams um I'm going to warm up my tea in my, wait, let's put it so you can read it, in my lovely Matthew mug that I made for myself. I'm sure you're all becoming well acquainted with the Matthew mug um, with my dinosaur on it, hand painted. Uh, but yeah, we've got lots of people. Um, Monica said, yes, I really enjoy watching your earring tutorial. Very interesting. Uh, June, I've just spent £100 on an order recently. Um, so thank you, June. Um, so she can't get any more for a while. No problem. Um, but yes, 
will you be selling the Pyote pattern separately from the kit as I'd really like to plan ahead until I can't afford to get the kits. The the Florentine, the, if you want to just get the Pyote tube pattern set, um, it is available as well for five pounds on the website. Um, just just if you go into the pattern section on our website, which do you know what I'll show you how to get to it because it's a lot of people want to know. Um, if you want to get, if you want to see all of our patterns on the Bead Spider website, if I just show you it. So uh, here is the menu um, on the on the website here. So just at the top of the the Bead Spider website on desktop, on mobile, it's the top left corner. There's a little three lines type looking thing. If you click that one, uh, just here, kits and tutorials. Click on that. And then just here, patterns, all patterns. And then when you click on that one, there you go. There is our beaded dress for free. There's my complete guide to Pyote, uh, to, to Brick Stitch. Here's a similar sort of style of earring, but this one has um, 30 different designs in there as well. The, uh, what was it that I was looking for again? Oh yeah, the, the Pyote tube patterns. If you scroll on down, here you go. There they are, 120 Pyote tube patterns, five pounds. Um, we've also got some really cool rainbow delicate earrings, a rainbow pendant, which is a bit different, uh, a Union Jack bracelet, lots and lots of fun things down here. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, some nice little earrings there, which are like a, a chick, um, some necklaces. And look, it continues on to the next page. Uh, carrier beads there's a hundred carrier bead patterns so if you if you never made like a carrier bead bracelet or necklace or anything um a crystal kitty cat there um some looming designs which you can also do in square stitch uh lots and lots of different things here all available for you um this one's free preciosa candy 20 different preciosa twin patterns loads and loads of patterns but also something else i will show you our tutorial library. We have a whole library of tutorials. So if you come again to this kits and tutorials section, video tutorials, which is this bit just here, that will take you to our video tutorials page. And from here, you can see here's today's video tutorial. Here's the Florentine from Friday, the Tree of Life from last week. Here's one that we put onto YouTube, which was our beaded flat Kumahimo, but also two other different flat Kumahimo ones here, some other earrings, Tiffany bracelet, lots and lots, just load more, load more. There's like a hundred and something different videos. Loads of the loads of the more recent ones are live videos, so they're quite long. Uh, but some of the older ones, if you want to go back, for example, how to make a Nepal beaded chain, that one's quite a sh uh, quite a short video. Um, there's our elastic video as well, which is super duper popular on YouTube. I think it's got almost 700,000 views now, maybe, or maybe more, 800,000 towards. Um, but yeah, lots and lots of different things all on there. There you go. This is the one that has nearly a, uh, pressing towards a million views, this video. Uh, but yeah, lots and lots of tutorials. Plus there's technique videos as well. All of that is available from that video tutorials section on the bead spider website so go check that out if you want to uh, do some more learning until i come back next friday uh, so next friday speaking of next friday i should just let you know uh, what is coming so here we go i'm going to be working with some of the designs from i'm going to do one of the designs from this massive bundle here i am going to put it available onto the website soon uh just after this show i will go on so that when you go on to the little link up there in the description that says upcoming shows it will be there for you you'll be able to see the um the the kit there for for sale uh but it also includes a oh, wait a second i should show you it includes all of those different beads so you get lots of different colors from um, seed beads, you get daggers. Chad has just asked, do you ship to the US? Yes, we ship to the whole world. So if you're in the US um, or Europe, uh, it's six pounds to the European Union. It's six pounds 50 flat rate, doesn't matter the size of your order. If you, even if you get a huge order, it's still only six pounds 50 um, for shipping. 
Um, and that is going to be, uh, yeah, if you're in the US, Canada as well, I think it's 650. Um, if you're in the UK, if you become a member on our website, so if you're downloading any of our patterns anyway, become a member on our website so that you can go to your My Account page and access your patterns at any time you want to get them. But if you are outside of North America, and Europe and the UK. In the UK, the postage is free if it's over £10 for our members. So definitely sign up and become a member. Uh, but yes, if you are in, say, Israel, we've had a lot of orders coming from Israel. Um, if you're in Australia, if you are in Mexico, we've had some from there as well. We've had lots of orders. We even had one to Ghana. That was fun. Um, but yeah, we send you a, a postage invoice. So essentially, we weigh your order, figure out exactly how much it's going to cost, and then we just send you a little invoice for that um, for that postage additional at the end. It's usually uh, you know, it's, it, we make it as reasonable as possible as we can possibly make it so that you're getting more bang for your buck, you can get more beads and you have to worry less about the postage prices. Um, but yeah, that is what's coming next Friday. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Once again, share this video so the others can see it, like it if you haven't liked it already. Um, you know, all of those sorts of things. Please help us support our channel um, on, on here on YouTube and on Facebook because we're live on both right now. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next Friday. No, 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 no. This 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 Friday, this Friday, not, not next Friday, this Friday uh, for that tutorial. So that's um, early September. I don't know. I got to look up the date. But um, yes. So thank you very much. Daphne says, love your videos. Sue says, good night, Kelly. Good night, Kelly. Um, uh, but yeah, so I guess lots of people are saying goodbye, actually. I should read through. Uh, June said, thank you so much. I'll be taking a close look at the patterns this evening. Um, <laughs> Sue says she loves my mug. I love it too. Um, I made it myself. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I'll see you on Friday. Um, don't forget to grab your free pattern. Um, if you want to learn Brick Stitch, grab the little Brick Stitch um, pack as well, just because it's super informative. It covers like everything, how to increase, decrease, do weird shapes, all that sort of stuff is in there. Um, but yeah, so thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all on Friday. Um, have a nice day, night, morning, wherever you are in the world. Again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.